Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and we're going to do something a little different in this video. Uh, I had a podcast for nine years called Photobomb. It's still out there. You can go check it out. Great show. Me and my friend Gary Hughes did that show for nine years. And on that show, we used to do a thing called Photography News. And every week we would take stories that were about photography in the news and we would talk about them on the show. And some of you may know that I was actually a disc jockey and a radio presenter for 20 years before I became a photographer. And so old habits die hard. I'm a guy who likes to talk about things. If you're subscriber to this channel, this channel then you know you know that that's the case so um i kind of miss it and we are going to do something new and if it catches on maybe i'll do it every single week so welcome to the weekend photography that's what i'm going to do this is the very first episode and this may be the only episode we'll see how it goes but basically i just want to talk about a couple of the things uh, that are happening in the news regarding photography and get your take on it as well i really want your feedback on these things because i like to have these conversations with photographers and i don't get to hang out with photographers as much as i would like to all right in the future i promise you that the introduction to this uh, bit will not be so long <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the top story. Uh, the top story, I think, uh, this week in photography and in the news as far as photography is concerned is that a federal judge has ruled on whether or not you can copyright an AI image. Now, we're all worried about AI and the future of photography because of the threat that AI poses, but this could be a major thing to help stem that tide of AI hurting us in the marketplace because a federal judge has ruled that you cannot copyright an AI image. He's actually upholding a ruling that was put forth by the U.S. Copyright Office. Now, let me give you the details on this. The judge's name was Judge Beryl A. Howell and a guy named Stephen Thaler, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Stephen, had tried to copyright an image that he had made with AI. Uh, Judge Beryl said, no, I'm going to uphold the decision of the Copyright Office and say you can't do that. And here's some of the stuff that he said that I thought was interesting. Uh, he said that uh, he contrasted AI images to photography by saying that a camera may generate only a mechanical reproduction of a scene and it does so only after the, the photographer develops a mental conception of the photograph. So apparently there was a ruling in the Supreme Court some years ago that was a big ruling on this very issue, and he talked about that uh, quite a bit. And they had ruled uh, that there was no doubt that protection can be extended to photos so as long as they are representative of original intellectual conceptions of the author. Okay, that's important. Original intellectual conceptions of the author. Make a little water here. And I'm going to paraphrase this part. Because it says that photographers' decisions like posing the subject, costumes, arranging the subject, lighting, shadow, so forth, that all of these things are a represent representation of the photographer's intellect in crafting the overall image. And that's why photographs are copyrightable and why AI images are not copyrightable. Okay, so this is good, right? This is good news. But... Anyone who knows me knows I also, I kind of like to argue the other side. I was a debate kid, so I'm always looking for what's the other side to this story. And, um, you know, hear me out here. Can't the argument be made that an AI image does represent a lot of int artistic intent by the photographer? I mean, is there a big difference between me saying, hey, let's put you in front of a green background and typing into an AI, put this on a green background? Right? It, you know, is there a big difference between me saying to a model, I need you to come uh, dressed as a housewife in the 50s, and me saying into AI, I need a picture of a woman dressed like a housewife in the 50s? Right? I, 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 I'm glad that this happened. I'm glad that this blow was struck for us photographers. I just think that the ground that they're standing on is a little shaky. Because there's certainly, you cannot compare typing prompts into an engine, you know, and creating an image with being a photographer. The two are completely different. But I don't think that you want to make the argument that there is no artistic intent at all in the eye of the person doing the prompting. I mean, the, the whole intent of creating the image is artistic, isn't it? I don't, you tell me, all right? Go get in the comments and... And let me know what you think. I'm glad that this decision went the way that it did, but I, I don't know that that's the ground 
that they should be standing on. All right, the other story I want to talk about actually comes from here, uh, here in Tampa, Florida. There's a, a lab here called Coastal Film Lab, and they recently posted on Instagram a public service message that said, you need to stop buying film from Amazon. Yeah. Um, at first I thought, you know, maybe it's one of those things where you're going to say something because they, you sell film, so you want people to come to you and sell film, but that's not what they're saying. They said they recently discovered that they were getting really bad results from some of the film that they were developing for their clients and that that film had all come from Amazon, and they suspect that Amazon is not storing the film properly. Those of you who shoot film, I used to shoot film, you know that you can't just take your film and throw it in the you know back of a truck and sit in the driveway all day. You need to have it in the right controlled environment. They said they took it upon themselves to do a test, and let me make sure I get this right. They said they exposed it ISO 400, and this was using uh, Porta 400, Portra 400 film. They exposed it ISO 100, uh, the end date portrait film developed in fresh control strip tested C41 chemistry and it came out severely fogged. And they are now recommending that their clients not buy any Amazon film until this is cleared up. So I went into the comments, I looked at the comments uh, that went with this Instagram and a lot of people in there were saying, yeah, you know, I, one guy said, I thought it was just me. <laughs> That's what I would have thought. I would have been like, what? man, I don't know what I'm doing. Why is my picture so foggy? It must be my lens. Uh, and several people came in and said, yeah, I've, I've noticed this and I've seen this happen and this has been a problem. So uh, if this is the case, Amazon absolutely needs to fix this as soon as possible. Uh, film is not something you can just throw into a warehouse anywhere and hope that it's going to be fine when you sell it to your clients. And I hope this, that they get it to this completely under control if it is in fact a problem. All right, two more quick stories for you and then we'll be out for the week. And both of these are for my Fuji people. Yay, Fuji. Uh, number one is Viltrox is now releasing the 27 millimeter F1.2 Pro for the Fuji X mount system. Oh, this is fantastic, right? This is uh, 27 millimeters, which means it's going to be, it's kind of weird. It's going to be around 40 millimeters. Right, because a 23 millimeter is equivalent to a 35, right? We know 35, well, I've got 35 right here, right? Uh, but 27 millimeters, that's gonna be closer to 40. So that's kind of a weird millimeter. I don't know that I've ever seen a 40 millimeter prime lens, but that's what you're talking about here. Anyway, this lens has been getting really good reviews and it retails for $545. And it's F1.2. Ooh, yeah, that's nice, right? Mm. So, if you're wondering what I was doing before I made this video, I was uh, in my email and sending emails to everybody I know who's a Viltrox rep and trying to get one of these <laughs> lenses sent to me so that I can check it out and do a review for you here on the channel because I, I really would like to check this lens out. I mean, 1.2, I have a 1.2 lens. Mm, not the best wide open, you know, uh, so I want to see if Viltrox has done a better job with this one. Uh, and it's a nice, interesting millimeter at 40 millimeters. So I really would like to uh, take a look at it. And I would like to compare it to this lens because 35, 40, not that big of a difference necessarily. And I would like to see how does it stack up against the native lens that comes in the Fuji X100V because this lens is fantastic. And, and I doubt it could beat this lens. All right, my final story is about the Fuji patches. Have you all seen this? These are so cool. Um, at first I was like, really? And then I was like, hmm. <laughs> and that was like, what? And uh, so Fuji is now selling patches that look like their film. So like when you buy a box of film, you know, on the end, the end of the box of film, it's got everything, that, that, what type of film it is in the whole nine yards, right? So Fuji has all these film simulations and we love these film simulations. So they are selling patches. The patches are two inches by two inches square. So a, this is how big it is, right? And you can buy these patches for just $9.95. And uh, if, if, I, I'll, if I find a link to where you can buy them, I'll put the link down in the description for you so you can go check these out. And you can get all these patches that you want, and then you'd have to sew them on your clothes yourself. And at first I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm not really a, eh. And then I was like, wait a minute, yeah, yeah. Like classic chrome is my jam. I really like classic chrome. And like a, you know, say a sweatshirt like this, if I could have like the classic chrome patch right here. It'd be kind of cool, you know, or if I was a, if I was a hat wearer, you know, you could put it on a hat or something like that. So I, I do think it's, it's kind of cool. And I like that Fuji's doing it because it shows that Fuji is, is moving more if they can 
into the cult of Fuji, you know, is embracing that they're different than other companies and they do things differently because they have these film simulations that are based off actual film and that they're kind of trying to feed that monster a little bit by giving us something, by giving us Beanie Babies, you know, giving us, <laughs> giving us something that we can, that we can cool, that we, we dig, that we can use and put on our clothes or whatever to just kind of show other people in the world who are also Fuji shooters like, hey, you know, what's up? Yeah, me too, right? So anyway, 995 that's a great price uh, for a two by two patch. So again, I'll put a link down there uh, to it if I can find it. All right, that's it for this week. Please get in the comments. Let me know what you think about all these stories, uh, the AI story, the film story, uh, the Viltrox lens. This is something you might consider uh, and a patch. You know, I, if, if this show wasn't worldwide, I would get some of these patches and figure out a way to give them away in a contest. <laughs> Except I'm afraid somebody would win in Bangladesh and it would cost me $400 to ship it there. Uh, also, don't forget that down in the description, uh, I've got links to everything down there. Listen, if you go to my website, uh, bureyperry.com, and then you go to the education tab, you'll find everything there because I have so much stuff that listing it all on the show here, uh, it just takes too long. But you know, I've got a couple of free eBooks to get you started in photography if you're new and to help you out. And of course, I've got my natural light book and I've got my uh, off-camera lighting book and I've got private lessons that you can take from me as well. And I've got links to all of my gear so you can go see all my gear and you can find some stuff for yourself as well. It's all on my website at bureyperry.com slash education. At least that's where it is right now. If you're watching this five or six years in the future, maybe that address has changed and hopefully I've changed that address in the description. <laughs> but uh, if you think it's easy having a YouTube channel, I've got another thing for you there. It's not the easiest thing in the world. All right, that's it. I enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed it too. And uh, if enough people seem to like it, I'll try and make it a weekly thing. I'll talk to you soon.